Don't wait till the night before Christmas to be good. All right, and in three, two, one. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode five of the seventh annual uh, 12 Podcasts of Christmas. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Francois Denasian. I'm Andrew Sorsdahl. I'm a fucking loser. I'm Veronica Salt. Veruca Salt. Or what's the fat boy that gets sucked up the tube? Augustus Gloop. I'm Augustus, Augustus Gloop. Gloop. I'm a fat loser who likes swimming in a river of fuck. What exactly is a river of fuck? Well, you can only go on it in a paddle boat. I'd like that's a good I, like that's like a, an apt description for most rivers. So he's probably not wrong. I don't know. Um, okay, so recently. Quite recently, actually. So it's like, you'll be watching this in December. So at the beginning of November, there was a big thing that happened in the United States. It was uh, an election. Uh, we had one fuckhead versus another guy. Slightly less of a fuckhead. Slightly less of a fuck. Uh, slightly is not the word I would use. Uh, but I would say he's less of a fuckhead, but he's not. He's slightly less of a... Slightly, a slightly better choice. I would agree with the term less of a fuckhead. Definitely would agree with yes, that. Yes, he is less of a fuckhead. He's definitely less of a fuckhead. But anyways, we, there was an American election. Uh, the current president of the United States, Donald Trump, uh, ran against uh, Joe Biden, the uh, president-elect. Um, and from the language I just used, uh, President Trump did indeed lose. Well, we don't have this confirmed. It won't be confirmed until the beginning of December. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, and from every sort of metric that is based in factual science, uh, Donald Trump did lose this election, and we will have the but, United States will have a new president what, what come about, January. What about the election fraud? The widespread election fraud. Yeah, I I don't know. Should we talk about the election fraud? Because it's like I I like we. Uh, I can joke about it, but I can also I also know enough now that I could actually like. I could actually discuss it in uh, I mean, a decent amount of certainty with a decent amount of uh, expertise. I don't know. Does does our viewer, our, I think our, half of our viewer is a Trump supporter, so I don't know. Ooh. Oh, are you saying that it's like in case we lose half of our, half of our tens of viewers? So are, should we? I don't, I'm just saying what we're treading on. Thin ice here. Are we? I don't know. I, I think there's some... There's Is that some, where we've come to on this podcast? That support for Donald Trump or not showing support for Donald Trump is treading on thin ice? That's where we're living, bud. We've made jokes on this program that are so off-handed and yeah, off-color. Those things, like, this is something that matters. Donald silly, Trump silly, matters? Silly little jokes and all that stuff. We can say vulgar things to get a laugh, but to some people, Trump is Trump matters. So I'll let you decide. Should we just forego the American election? No, I'll tell you what I'm saying. I'm, I'm mostly kidding, but because I'd love to celebrate the results of the American election, I would say it's not even worth celebrating. But I mean, I guess the fact that Trump, I would say him, it's very worth celebrating. <sighs> there are a Joe. lot of people who are going to be not losing rights in the next four years, which is worth celebrating. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think Trump would have actually been able to do a lot of that stuff anyways, but it's for sure definitely not going to happen now. I mean, it's just like... That's not true. The big problem is the fact that the Supreme Court currently is Republican, mostly, and so far, they're still the shot. Senate. The Senate... The, uh, sorry, yeah. The Senate is still uh, a majority Republican, and we still have a shot at getting some Democrats in there and, and getting the majority back to the Democrat side. But that's not a certainty. It's also, it's more likely that it's going to stay Republican, in which case there could be some really bad repercussions that happen in the next four years still, just because of the fact that the Supreme Court is packed full of Republicans. We, there's a very real, I'm just, there's less of a possibility. Had Donald Trump won the election, we would have seen the overturning of Roe v. Wade 
that would have happened, like almost definitely. Actually, I'm not even saying almost. Definitely that would have happened. Um, because that was like, not only is it something that most of the Supreme Court is in uh, support of, but it also something that Donald Trump had, his platform was largely based on yeah. taking away abortion rights from people. So that is one thing that I will say is a definite positive in Joe Biden winning is now we have a real shot at that not being overturned. So congratulations, America, on joining the rest of the uh, uh, just, free world. I just have, have so little faith in America in general that, like, I just become so jaded. And it's like, yeah, great. Joe Biden won. He's like, uh, he's like, as much as people like to joke about him being Hillary Clinton with a smaller dick, it's like. He's better. Obviously, he was the only choice next to Trump. Obviously, but it's not, it's not like Joe Biden is this like amazing force for change, and he's gonna do all this like amazing stuff for America. It's like no, he's no, gonna, he's gonna try to no, no. But zero, zero is a better value than negative a million. Yeah, but I mean, like again, that maybe deserves some celebrating. But like, congratulations, your country's. Maybe you're not going to be as fucked up as it was. I, I, don't know. I, I think so I think undue. not repealing abortion rights is a thing to celebrate. Also, I agree. I mean, it, it didn't. Trans it, people are going to be able to be in the military again. That's also yep. something to celebrate. That's fucking awesome. Gay people won't have their marriage rights taken away. That's fucking awesome. That was also a thing that was in serious threat with Trump winning the election. I, I, it is something to celebrate. Like it's like there's so many things that probably aren't going to happen that probably would have happened if it would have been a Trump presidency. I mean, I, I guess if we're going to go scrape the bottom of the barrel for things that probably and might have happened. No, no, that, then, but that's not what I'm doing. I like these, these are things that like most analysts agree would have been brought up. And like, I, I'll say this, like the, the, the gay thing, I'll say like the, the gay, gay wedding rights being, or gay marriage rights being taken away. That one, you can definitely make an argument that that one maybe so. wouldn't have been gotten to, but Roe v. Wade, Roe v. Wade abortion rights probably. would have been overturned had Trump been stated president. I agree. But I mean, it would have been just so much civil unrest then. And it would have been... Oh, definitely. So, like, again, it, yeah. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. It's just, like, I don't know. I have so much apathy where it comes to the states. I mean, we, we, we can't affect any change anyways. So, I don't know. I, 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 don't, it's not that, not the, I don't mean to disagree. It's just I I have so much apathy where, where when it comes to that when there's so much fucked up shit. In what do you think, country. Patrick? Joe Biden, we're celebrating? I'm only interested in, in discussing a contest of actual importance. Uh-oh. And that is my ability to come back and win this fucking contest. Well, let's let's wrap up. I want I actually want to hear your your opinion on Sleepy Joe, is it worth, is it a thing that's worth? I, I think not electing Donald Trump is worth it. I also think that the Supreme Court has been already Republican controlled. So if they were going to attack Roe v. Wade, they may have already done it. And they're already in the process of it. Sure. I mean, they could have reviewed it more quickly. They had four years. The problem is they did, they weren't stacked until the last two years. I mean, they were still stacked. They overturned one seat. Now they have like a seven to Whatever. Well, no, the problem was the last guy was a moderate and he had voted against Roe v. Wade. That was the big deal. Was they, they, they had, the, the problem was that th- there was a guy who. I, was I a, think there's a lot more complexity than just automatically saying that they would have overturned it. No, no, they are. They would, they, they didn't. They would have. No, no, no. Saying, they, like, it's not complex. It's not complex at all. You, you, you had an equal. There are a lot of factors at play. I can't say. Well, that. no, no. With the Supreme Court, it's very simple. You, you, you had, you had, a, you had a court where it was like you had equal sides. No, no, that's not true. You actually had one more Republican vote than you did Democrat, Democrat technically. Yes. But the one Republican was, was a moderate. moderate. I understand. Had, I'm just saying. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm not, not a sightseer. I'm not done yet. Okay. It's very simple to explain. Who had a history of when? Because Ro, Roe v. Wade has been brought yes, up. In, I understand. Roe v. Wade had been brought up in contention, and he had voted against it because of the precedent that was set by the public. Some consider it a super precedent. Others don't. But I'm just saying in the Supreme Court, yes. he had considered a president. So f- over the last 30 years, it has been brought up and he has voted to keep Roe v. Wade, even though he's a Republican and that his party doesn't yeah, necessarily yeah. agree with that. That's what's happened. But the problem was, is we lost a progressive in Ruth Bader Ginsburg, RIP. You're amazing. Uh, it sucks that we lost her. And then she was replaced with her, the antithesis, yeah, I, which is like a hardcore Catholic fundamentalist. So now... 
it, it doesn't even matter that there's a moderate. That's the problem. Like, it's like they can ramp through whatever. That, that, that's the big issue. So, and the, the problem with had Donald Trump been elected, that, that, that's the big issue, is the fact that there would have been, there would have been no recourse. It would have just been like what, whatever is the popular uh, fundamentalist uh, conservative position, that would have been the thing that would have ramped through. At least with Joe Biden as president, he does have some power uh, with with executive orders, uh, just with his poll. Like, and and the Senate is not decided yet. I'm not going to say that it's not decided. Very likely, it will still remain a a majority Republican, but it isn't decided in January. There's some very important elections that are going on as well. But um, just saying that it's like had Donald Trump won, Roe v. Wade would have been overturned almost certainly. You, you would ask I, I, any I'm, analyst. I'm okay saying almost certainly, but we can't obviously. Predict yeah, whether or not saying that it, would have saying it's a certainty is a little bit much. I, I, yeah, there are I, there are a lot of factors at play, and also I guess you could have said Ger Germany to, could have stopped in Paris. Yes, but also like, Republicans probably need not, to start appealing sure. towards more center. They know that after this yeah, last election, the Republican they Party lost the popular is, vote by yeah. four million. They have, they do. In my Even opinion, if they had won the electoral college and lost the popular vote by that amount, they need to start shifting back to centers, and they're not that stupid. They're politicians. They know how that works. So overturning Roe v. Wade would have alienated even a larger group of people. And I don't necessarily say that they would have pushed for that. They, it, It's politics. It's not just their ethical or moral. No, 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 no. But that, that's not what I'm saying. I, what I'm saying is that had Donald Trump been victorious, there would have been a perception within the Republican Party that this is what the people want. Therefore, this is what matters. I, this I, is the platform. This is. This, I don't think there. No, it's not. Perhaps I, it's I don't like think it, Republicans it's, are it's that. Very I, one, two, three, four. I don't think Republicans are that. A Republican they Republican. they elected Donald Trump as their president. Yeah. They're the ones who decided that he was going to lead no, their party. I, I totally understand, but what they do doesn't make sense. The, the RNC doesn't necessarily reflect the entire Republican Party, nor even a majority of the Republican. Oh no, party. I, never. Like that's not the thing. But the that, that's majority. Who their candidate. I mean, right now we're seeing as well. Donald Trump is 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 crying voter election fraud with less than I'm going to say less than no evidence because I don't know how that's possible, but with literally no evidence. Um, and we are seeing a, which is really disappointing. We are seeing way too many Republicans coming out and supporting this, even though they also don't have any evidence, and solely because he is the leader of their party. For some reason, they're coming out in his support. We are seeing some people take a stand. Um, I, Ted Cruz is a jackass, but like uh, who? Uh, Mitch, uh, Mitt, Mitt, Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney, sorry, Mitt Romney has, t to a degree, come out and and been like, "Eh, I'm not fucking super feeling this," which is nice to see. But it's still, it's like you're seeing a large portion of the Republican Party see, just falling saying, back into partisanship and like, but, but this is being like, yeah, what Donald Trump's saying is true, even though. By every count, what he's saying is a lie. I, I think that we, we also, the media likes to pick out like eight or ten people from each party and like that's the bulk of Republicans. Just because Mitch McConnell and Mitt Romney and a few other people. Mitch McConnell actually hasn't come out and support, our support. Support this sort of action doesn't mean that the bulk of the Republican Party supports it because you got to remember there's layers. So it's like. That's also what I'm claiming. you have a majority, well, you said majority of the Republican Party. And I but, but I have been watching what, but the thing is what you're saying I'm claiming is not what I'm claiming. I've actually seen this with my own eyes. I know, but you haven't seen, the, CNN has not interviewed the majority of the Republican Party. They, well, they don't have to they interview. interview like 10, 15, All, all it is is a tweet. It's just a statement that says like. Here, here's the voter fraud. That's all they need to do, and then it's like, what side do you think they're on? No, 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 but what I'm saying is, just because a politician disagrees with something doesn't mean they're going to come out and tweet about it, because they also have to worry about the majority whip in their party, and they have to worry about the senior delegates in, you know, their state. They have to worry about, you know, ensuring that they... Yeah, I, like, I'm not in disagreement with any of this. I don't even know what the point you're trying I'm, to make. I'm saying right. that I would disagree that the majority of Republicans are considering Donald Trump's current actions totally on point. I would say that there are a group of Republicans who are still doing it and a bunch of people who are sitting quietly because they don't want to lose their jobs. So you're, and you're talking obviously specifically not just people who would consider themselves Republicans, but people who are actually in public office is what you're saying. And, and people who like, there are a lot of people there is, who are, there are, are card there is Republicans. Just, there is just below the majority that voted him in while he was saying this kind of shit. Yes, I, I, I totally agree. I'm there, not there are, there are, I'm there are reasons, people in the There's party. also reasons to vote someone in 
that it's like that are beyond. You don't need to agree, agree with, with everything. Agreeing with what he's saying, just because they voted him in doesn't mean that they implicitly agree with with everything. What he said. That's true. And there there are moderate Republicans. I just don't like. Oh, I definitely. generally don't like to paint everyone with the same brush. And I think that no, that's no. a big part of the problem. I, for me, the thing that's confusing but, is that more Republicans, higher up Republicans, are jumping ship. I guess a few of these people, like, um, what the fuck is that guy's name? The, It'd be nice if Mitch McConnell actually said something. That would I, be and the really thing is, nice. Like, you have Mitch McConnell; he's like seventy-five years old. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't have a future. No, he does give a fuck. He he gives a fuck to one side. No, no, I'm just saying he doesn't have to worry about his political future. No, is, no, no. Is he even going to run again? Probably not. Maybe one. Well, he doesn't need to run. I'm saying in the next like four years from now, is he gonna is he gonna re up for his office again? Probably not. Oh, so like, I, does he need to worry about his political future? But there's I'm sure there's Cena, lots of Republicans imagine. that are in their forties who everyone's jockeying for position all the time. It would be very nice to see a, a, a more vocal majority from the Republican Party being like, "Hey, we actually care about facts." I, that I would agree. be nice. And there's probably a large majority that want to say something, and they're just waiting for the dam to break and somebody to say who's higher up. Because all the higher ups are saying, "Let's keep fighting this thing," and once the dam breaks, everyone's going to start dumping on him. Because once he is lost, he is no longer valuable. Because American politics is a very, very cutthroat system. It's like, yeah, oh, we fucking love Jimmy Carter. Oh, Jimmy Carter, fuck that. Move on, next guy. Who cares? Fuck him. Like, you know, once yeah. once your horse is dead, you're worrying about your own political career. And I mean, like shows like House of Cards over, over obviously super dramatize that kind of thing. Like, if I'm 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 s- s- senator from Wisconsin and I say this is bullshit with Donald Trump, it's like, well, is the party going to pick me to run again in this seat? I don't know what's going to happen now because I've stood up against who are the most powerful people in the party. So I, it's very tough to just say whether or not majority of Republicans do one thing or the other. And I hope that they have more logic and reason. Like they can't all be that fucking. Oh no no! I I mean the big thing is like the silence right now is deafening. Uh, so, so that, that's speaking volumes right now, but it's like, but I'm not, I'm not going to say that it's like when Donald Trump absolutely, the, the problem is, is like with his rhetoric and with what I'm sure is, uh, coming through, it's just like, you're in the Republican party. So it's like, you're hearing a lot of shit I imagine right now, but it's like, even if he's got a shot of the Republican party wanting him to, cause he has the ability, even if he loses, people are talking about him maybe potentially running in the 2024 election and the Republican party pushing him for the next one. I don't think it's going to happen. I think most people think it's not going to happen, but I think even, I think any Republican who's like, maybe that's a possibility. They're like, maybe I shouldn't fucking speak out. So it's like, I think they're cowards, but it's like, I, I under, I understand that. Um, I understand that it's like, I don't want to lose my job. So I'm not going to fucking like be like, Yes, he's not like the, nothing he's saying has any ba- basis in factual reality. You see the same thing with the Democratic Party, just on different issues, and not right now. Like you saw the exact same thing with the Democratic Party when when Obama was being criticized for drone strikes and his stance on whistleblowers. Most of the Democratic Party had their fucking mouths zipped on an important issue because the exact same thing. So I, I mean, it's a I completely it's, different issue, and a and, well, a, dr- but, and a drone <laughs> strike, and the potential benefits of a drone strike versus the potential my, outweigh does not it is not equitable to a just a lie. It's not like well, Obama said, "No, but, I didn't." There wasn't a drone strike. It's not like he well, said I would, that. I would argue that Obama's stance on whistleblowers it, is I don't as like it as is is equally as important as. Like if Trump's lying about this about about the election fraud, like but no, that's it's, gonna, that's it's not good. an if. He is lying about okay, it. Okay, well, sorry. This him, is him, verifiable. Him, him lying about it, like it's going to be proven wrong, and it, 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 ultimately it's just him blustering. It's like the, but, the but, Republican Party waiting for that to happen. But the, but the argument isn't by. is one thing more important than the other. It's like my, my point. Like, is like a Democrat, on both sides if, of the if, if a Democrat would argue that these drone strikes are necessary, it's like sure, argue that. I don't agree with it. I agree with you. I personally do not agree with that. I think it's terrible. But it's like it's not like Obama said. I didn't fucking commit this drone strike. It never happened. We didn't do it. It's like that. That's not what happened. I mean, like, no, my, my, I, I my, guess like, uh, like a, a is, sort of, a sort of equitably, like you also brought up data collection. So like, that's, that's a little more equitable in the sense that the, the, the government technically denied it because it's like they had to, because it's like they, they had considered it a, a matter of national security. No, no, my, but my, it, but my it point, wasn't, my point is, is about the silence, not about the issue. And my point is, that but they might have you're, agreed you're scoring, with it, is what I'm saying. You're scoring. You're score. You're saying that it, the silence is deafening, and you're scoring all these points because the B- B- Republican Party well, is they're silent. Not, I, they're I, not calling I, out a verifiable lie, is and, what I'm saying. And, and and I guess like 
my my point is there's there's it happens on both sides of the aisle. It's a it's a it's a function of the American political system, not specifically the Republican Party in this. Instance. I think is I'm not even necessarily disagreeing. I'm just saying like I find me an example of when the Democratic Party when a Democratic president lied and then it was verifiably proved again and again and again by lit not literally by I'm gonna say 85 percent of every news source. And it was like, you are lying about this. And then the rest of the party was saying, no, he's not. Or was quiet about him saying and said, no, he's not. I don't think that's ever happened in the history of the Democratic Party. You can challenge me if you want. I'm fairly certain no, that's never I'm not, happened. I'm not so I don't think there point. is an equitable thing. Is, is there shit? Is, does the Democratic Party say do shitty shit? Yes. Does the Republican Party do shitty shit? Uh, is Joe Biden perfect? Absolutely not. I've got a lot of problems with Joe Biden. But, but it's just like, I don't, I don't like this immediately when it's like, you're like, great. Uh, the pussy grabbing guy who's got four, like whatever, 40 or some sexual assault charges against him didn't win. That's awesome. It's like, oh yeah, but Joe Biden, he's not great either. It's like, nobody said that. It's just like, it's awesome that fucking people aren't going to lose their abortion rights. Gays, trans people are going to be able to be in the military again, which is fucking ridiculous. And then it's like, uh, the, like I said, the gay marriage thing, that, that, that one is very arguable, but still, even so, gay people will definitely still be able to get married, which is fucking awesome. And it's like, the, it's like these are objectively really good things to celebrate that, could, that were at risk had Donald Trump oh, been, I, been made president. I, 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 I so it's just like, it's not a hard question. <laughs> it's not difficult. It's so weird when it's like, oh, but Joe Biden's not great either. It's like, I didn't say that. Nobody's saying that. Like, who is saying this, that Joe Biden's the best president who ever lived? Nobody's saying that. We're, je we're literally just celebrating the fact that the pussy grabber is no longer the leader of the United States of America. Yeah, and, and ultimately the leader of the free world. I, I don't disagree. I'm, I'm interested to see what he's going to do post-presidency. Probably spend time behind bars, I would hope. Um, Very likely. I mean, no doubt that... I mean... I would be remiss to find another person, human being, who had had more allegations lobbed against them, and then they all turn out to be false. I mean, something. He had to have done some of the things that everyone said he's doing. Absolutely. Like it, it would be, it would be ludicrous to me that he goes out, challenges all these things in court, and then wins every time. Not gonna fucking happen. I can't imagine, unless he has. And, like, he's not going up against nobody. It's like he's going up against people with money and good attorneys. Like, he's going to he's going to go to jail. Or he also fucking fired a bunch of really good lawyers, which sucks. Like, he doesn't... Like, obviously, there's a, there's a countless good lawyers. So, it's like he, he, he's got, he's, he does have a lot of money, so he can hire whoever. It's like, I actually... We don't even know if he has a lot of money. We don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. I, I guess, like, in the assumption that maybe he's got money somewhere, he could maybe hire, like... Because right now, his legal team is just not... He just, he fired a lot of really good people that he really shouldn't have burned bridges with because he, he had an excellent legal team, especially, uh, before his first, uh, before he was, uh, like right before he got into presidency and his first year of his presidency, he had like an excellent legal team that won a lot of, uh, big battles for him, but he has, n there's no one currently on his legal staff. I, and that's why he's struggling right now with all these, uh, another point uh, I do want to raise is that I think, and, and just to end this point is that it's kind of dangerous to have these really old presidents because you keep getting a bunch of people where it's like they got nothing to lose because they're going to be dead in 10 years. Mm. And it's like, yeah, fucking sue me. I don't care. I'll be fucking dead in five years. I agree. It, I, yeah, I, I agree with that whole I, 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 I don't. I, I think 70 should be the limit for being elected in your first yeah, term. I, I agree. If you're it, running again and you're over 70, that's fine. But you should not be able to run for your first term when put over the age of 70. Yeah, if you have no real stake, and that's debatable what that means, but it's like, whatever. In if you have no stake years. in, 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 yeah, in the next 50 years, it's like, I'm sorry, but you maybe shouldn't be making decisions that affect people for potentially the next 150 years. Yeah, like, like you could be doing things. So it's like, no, I, I agree with that. I, I, I would say that is a, uh, just to go back, just to, just so I don't sound so fucking insanely partisan. Um, I think that's one huge strike against Joe Biden is the fact that if he is basically he's elected, I'm not going to say he's for sure. We'll, we'll know at the beginning of December, let, uh, speaking as if he is definitely the president at the beginning of December, uh, if that's the eventuality that happens, he's fucking way too old to be president. That shouldn't even be a fucking thing that happens. 
Um, uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, okay, we're going to do clip number one. Okay. Back uh, to tune uh, while he's getting that fired up. You probably already have fired up, don't you, Alex? Oh, no, he doesn't know. Uh, so they're doing Guess That Tune. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Guess That Tune is uh, Andrew knows a lot about South Park. Brad knows a lot about American Dad. They've challenged each other to a, uh, to a game where if, if Andrew can listen uh, just audio, you'll be able to see the clip. They can't see the clip. Uh, if Andrew can listen to a, to a, to a out-of-context clip from South Park and he can guess what episode it's from and what season and guess the plot, he gets some points. And if uh, Brad can do the same for American Dad, he gets some points. And I'll just quickly mention that uh, if you can bet some money with, with somebody who's winning the show, it has to be at least $10, and uh, choose which one, which one of them you think is going to win. And if they win, uh, you will be put in a draw to win a T-shirt. Uh, so three T-shirts on the line. Okay, Sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a side bet on this. If you can guess this clip, I will do another shot of T-shirts. How much do I have to get, get of it? You guys will be able to get supply. Okay. I'm gonna go get this. Holy fuck. He's gotta get a four to four. No, no, he just has to guess the plot. Oh, no. And in three, two, one. I've done it, Kevin. I've successfully gene spliced this chipmunk with a piece of provolone cheese. Ah. Do you know what this means, Kevin? No more will the world have to look in two different places for squirrels and provolone cheese. No more will mankind have to pick. Who could that be? That is from Prehistoric Iceman. No. No? No, that's too early. Okay, I shouldn't, I shouldn't start by guessing the whatever. Um, oh, it's one of the Dr. Mephesto episodes. Yes, um, you can't get that. Um, no, obviously. Um, ooh, I might have to this use... This is my hardest clip. I might have to... The watch isn't going to help me because it's just going to no. be Dr. Mephesto in his lab. Um, um, so it's your clip number one. I'm guessing it's from season four. Yes. Um, Fuck that. Bullshit, whatever. Yeah, I'll <laughs> well, that's probably all we're gonna get. Um, uh, the provolone cheese thing, like it's. I I know that. I know that clip so well. You can get that. Um, I know. Uh, it's is it, that's not even related to the episode at all, is it? No, no, it's not. Um, God, I. I can't give you any more. I don't give them anymore. If Especially if you've got a uh, teacher's online. <laughs> okay, let me just think for a second. Give me a second here. Um, oh, fuck. I know what that what episode this is, too. It's driving me nuts. I'm going to feel like such a dick when I don't, when I don't get it. Um, Can I, can I listen to it one more time? I'm going to use one of my, my yeah. re-listens just to bide my time. Okay, Alex, you're going to play clip number one one more time. Three. Producer Alex is a staunch professional. He's been doing this for 26 Three, years. Two. I've done it, Kevin. I've successfully gene spliced this chipmunk with a piece of provolone cheese. Do you know what this I means, Kevin? Dark, yeah. No more will the world have to look in two different places for squirrels and provolone cheese. No more will mankind have to pick. Who could that be? Is that from Nambla? It's from Nambla. That's right. It's from the National Association of Bad Boy Love. That, that is, was insanely... That is, yes, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's from that one where... They, uh, yeah, they, <laughs> they, uh, do I need to, do I need to explain the, the plot? We, we all know what the Nambla episode is. I have to explain for the viewers. Uh -huh. So Cartman starts finding older men online. Why? <laughs> Why does Cartman find older men online? Why? Because his friends are not mature enough for him. So he has to go and he, he meets these cool older guys that keep getting taken away from, taken away and then he becomes a spokesperson for Nambla. He invites all the guys to uh, come to a Nambla party, and then but butters. They end up putting butters forward to get raped by all the fucking pedophiles. And then Kenny ends up dying in the in the ensuing trampling of the pedos. Man, I'm going to say that season season best. season four episode eight. 
three. You guys won't know this, but we did. We filmed three of these episodes consecutively. So he's done two teacher shots in uh, in a less than two okay. hour period of time. Well, I've I've effectively lost at this point. Okay, if you could... that was an insane guess, Andrew. What were you? That thinking? was insane. I knew uh, my my. I was thinking. I was like, uh, I thought it, I thought it might be from the Loch Ness monster episode. I no. I I I knew. I knew that. Is Doctor Mephisto in the Loch Ness? Yeah, he is. Right. Uh, no. 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 Oh. So now it's eleven and a half to three and a half. I guess so. Or five. Damn, that's fuck, That's nuts. That was such a good guess. Thank you. I, I knew I knew it. Because that is I like that, it. like like the Sorry, thing clips, clips. has nothing to do with the Doctor Mephisto line. <laughs> like that's so uninvolved. That was so well done. Um. Yes. Clip. I, ladies and gentlemen, if you're placing bets, like I, I know who I'd be placing my bets on. And I'm actually going to say this is your final opportunity to place bets. Uh, because technically Bradford yeah. could uh, be the underdog and he could pull it out if yeah. he if he really did well here. Uh, so I'm going to say this is the last episode where you can place bets. After this, you will he not might. be eligible. So you you have to get in your um, your guesses uh, by the end of this by the, before well, the next episode. Yeah, before the next episode, which will be in a week or a couple day or <laughs> whatever. We it might be it. tomorrow. Yeah. Whenever you see this fucking episode, send us a thing. Okay. Do it. Okay. This is clip number six. Okay, kid, let's see how wimpy you really are. Mm. Oh, God, that's peppery. I need to watch it. Okay. Are you using your watch? There's only one of them. You got two of them. This is... Wait, wait, wait. Are you in... Are you in the... Uh, this is weird. Sorry. Now. So, wait, wait, wait. If you don't use your watch by the second five, do you get two watches, though? No, I only get one watch in every... Yeah, no, no, but I'm saying like if you didn't use your, you guys were saying you get one watch per five. Yeah, I didn't use mine, so I don't get two. I hope this is it. This is my only watch. Uh, and then you're done. You get no watches. Man, that's fucking. Yeah, it's like it was. It was. Okay, kid. Let's see how wimpy you, you really know you are. Know that episode. Come on. Mm. Oh God. Like that's I peppery. think the episode's called "A Bully for Steve." You got it. Yeah. So nice. that's one. That's the synopsis of the episode is that Stan is worried about Steve being whip and wussing out on bullies, so he hires Stelio Contos. Stelio Contos. Oh, he hires a kid to go after. Or he bullies Steve. Yes, yes. Okay, good. I, I, I couldn't have given it to you if you didn't. If you he he ends up becoming Steve's bully, but then Steve hires Stelio Contos to kick Stan's ass. Yes, there you go. But then... Uh, that's, that's the plot. That's the whole plot. There's no subplot to that one. That's I, I don't think anyway. That's two points. You gotta guess season and episode. Let me just fuck. Where is that? Yes, go go ahead. I'm just trying to find where I have that. Um, there it is. Season season seven. Wait, did Andrew guess seasons and stuff for that one? Yeah, I, I got season four correct. I didn't get the episode right. I oh, got I see episode it. name and so you got three out of I four. I got three out of right. three or four. Yeah. Season seven. No. Episode, yeah, one more chance of redemption here. Six. No. Um, so it's season five, episode 16, I believe, for Steve. It's two out of four. So you got two out of four on that one. What are our totals? Seven and a half to 11 and a half right now. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Bradford can still feasibly come back if he does very oh, well. Yeah, if he yeah, consistently. Yeah, and I, yeah. yeah. If, he, if he nails two of them, he'll be fucking basically there. All right. So I want, you want my second one here? So wait, wait, we done two this episode? You no, did that two? was just one. You've each done one. Yeah. So we're gonna do a second one. Yeah. We got time, then we'll, we'll wrap up here. Oh, that's peppery. I thought like that was like that's. I'm glad you got that one because like that was one of those ones where I was like, if you don't get this one, I'm yeah. But the be... problem is, the last time I got real confident right off the shoot, I was in trouble. Okay, you have, you have your you have your one picked out. Are you going? No. You go. Okay, I'm going. Okay, I have to download one. So I thought I downloaded it, but I guess it didn't. Fuck, you're gonna just get the rest of these. I, I, I'm lost. I'm lost. You don't know that. I've lost for sure. I have. I, there's no way you don't get the rest of these. Like, 
Okay, Alex, um, clip, clip 10 for Brad. Why do you say that? Like, like you got now, but like now it's yes. dumb. Like I can't. Like even if I get all of them full, <laughs> you're gonna get the, you're gonna get at least two points on the rest. All right, can we put in a seppuku clause? Is there something that he can do to like just get out of the embarrassment of the rest? You could of it? you could do another shot of teachers right now. Just one. I mean, it's if up to you. It's it, up to you. It's up to you. Okay, if he does it right now before he's guessing this clip, he can. Okay, you know what? He's gonna fight. Wait, what? What do you? What do you have to do if you lose the whole thing? There's got to be some shots. two shots of teachers. Like double. Two doubles. No, a double. I don't know when the last time you had a sip of that, but it's not good. Okay, I just did a shot kidding. That was the point. Three, <laughs> two, one. Oh, I'll admit it. I'm a degenerate. I love drugs and drinking and gambling, and my moral good. compass always points There's one. Oh. Uh, the episode. Yeah! It's, it's Lent in Rogers Bar, and everybody can commit all the adulterous and ridiculous acts they want until the end of the episode. If, if you didn't hear me, sorry, you probably had my audio cut off. Um, uh, and then he's going to cut the finger off the first member who fucks up. Yep, so that's two points. Okay, what uh, what season? What episode? Season eight? No. What's your guess? God, it's fairly new because that's when Avery starts getting fucking crazy. Make your guess. Season ten? No, not whatever. I, I, I season ten, episode four. I don't. <laughs> Okay, I got, I'm going to give you a half point because you said season eight and then said no. It was It is season eight. Nice. So I'll give you a half point for that. So you got two and a half for that one. Season eight, episode eight. I give him a full point for that. Uh, this, this is, this is, he's still got three more chances. He can still I, win. I just, I'm, I, give, I give my opinion. Huh? He, gets, he gets two and a half. Two you don't, a, he gets two and a half there. You don't so. need to take my consideration. So you're at, what are you at now? Nine and I'm at 11 and a half. You're only two points, two and a half points behind. Yeah, but you're one full episode behind. Yeah. So we got, you got one more episode now? Yeah, this is my last one for this one. This, and this then we're, we're at six episodes? Then we're at seven. Oh, oh wow. We're now I'm giving you just like, these are just gimmies. No, they're not. Like, I'm going to give you what, my, what clip? my next toughest one. Clip four, please. Like, and then it gets easier for me. And the caveat I have around clip seven, no caveat anymore. Fuck that. What do you mean? I, I can't. I can't give you the caveat. Okay, clip number four in three, two, one. All right, so ready for your first assignment? Sure. Okay, there's a meth lab down at 567 Malavista. The operators are probably armed to the hilt with illegal weapons. I want you to get down there and see what you can find. Two points right off the bat. What <laughs> That's the from... Episode? It's from Little Crime Stoppers, and it's from season uh, season six. No. Okay, no. So I'll get two points for it at least. I see. I'm gonna guess episode ten. No, season seven, episode six. Okay, so I got them. Yeah, okay. Um, it's from that episode where they're they're playing cops, and then they actually end up becoming Little Crime Stoppers because they. Solve the case, and then they end up. The police end up actually sending them to like meth labs. <laughs> they're, they're actually on the job. At the end, they decide to like quit playing cops and just be uh, just play play dry cleaners instead. Laundromat, yeah. laundromat, whatever. Same dry cleaners. Laundromat. How many did you get there? Two. Nice. Yeah, the the season number, like episode numbers, that's so. I got it's very. I know you did that. It. It's just it's like that's like it's like guessing the plot and the. The, even the show, like, I would never guess the show title, ever. See, that's something I never fucking look at when I fucking watch shows. Yeah, I, I would be able to do one quarter of any of these. Finger Lenting Good was... Wow, was pretty funny. Well, I knew you were going to get that one. That's why I gave it to you, but I knew you needed a little pick-me-up. That was my easiest one. So can we... Uh, what, what, what's the score at currently? Uh, 13 and a half to... Seven and a half. No, to nine. Oh, nine. To nine. Not nine and a half, Nine. Uh, to nine, and how many clips do we have left? Three. Three. And I'd like to remind everybody that each clip is worth, uh, can be potentially worth four, four points. points. So Brad can still come back. Like I said, 
Uh, you need to have your bets in by the end of this episode or before we air the next episode. If you do not have your bets in before we air the next episode, you will not be put in the draw to win the uh, free T-shirt. Pizza party. Uh, <laughs> the free pizza party. So just just letting you all know we that. Will, we will be doing um, And you have to bet at least $10. We it are going to be doing to be a, a Western, Western Family Rose. Pizza Party for the winner. Yes. Um, Western Family. Brad, I'm just wondering, how is that teacher's whiskey tasting? Is it better the more you shoot or is it worse? Somehow it looks more like urine now. I will say this about the teacher's whiskey. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to regret this. I'm going to say it's right nice now bottle. when Brad gets full four points in the next three episodes and wins. I'm going to regret this gloating, but um, I'll take it. The whiskey tastes better than the taste of defeat on my fat, pouty lips. And that's saying something because it tastes bad. I am not only a disgrace to my forefathers, but the children that I am likely too infertile to have <laughs> moving forward because. Not only do I lack the knowledge of these shows, I lack virility and masculinity, and my blood is primarily estrogen. Look at these big floppy breasts. Thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. I'm not a good person, and I don't plan on become one anytime. Oh.